And just a reminder that these are the speakers and the microphones, so please direct your comments, including our guest speakers, to these speakers when they, um, and please speak up a little bit, especially if you are masked or any. So uh, we're good to begin? We're good. All right, well, welcome everybody to uh, the August meeting of the Parks and Recreation Pros, actually now, Parks and Recreation Space Commission. Um, we'll take roll call right now, so I'll just go through and no Richard Conway is not here, so Commissioner Holinsky. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stackhouse. Yep. And Commissioner Kerr. Here. I don't think we have Commissioner Martin on, is that correct? Not able to get and Commissioner Rowden. Present. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, Councilmember Salas is not here as well as I understand. So then we can move on to item number two approval of the July 18, 2022 meeting minutes. Has anyone had a chance to review those? And do you have any comments or? On those. If not, do I have a motion to approve the 2022 meeting or uh, July meeting minutes? I'll, I'll move to approve. Second. Very good. All in favor of approving those, say aye. 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 Okay, sounds like we have approval of the meeting minutes. Now, on public participation. This, this portion of the meeting is for items that are not not on the agenda. The commission cannot act on items presented during the public participation of the agenda. The commission is prohibited by the open meeting law from discussing or considering the item under, until such time that the item is officially placed on the agenda. These limited comments to five minutes. Do we have anyone from the public that wishes to? Comment at this time. No. Okay. Very good. I'm moving right along. On to discussion items. We have four discussion items today. The first one is proposal for community running track, being presented by Vince Sherry. So I will kick us off. Um, Vince contacted me, and I'll let him introduce himself, but he contacted me a few months ago and we've been working a little bit together on an idea for and the need for a community running track. So I invited him to the meeting today to present to you all the need and some background and some ideas that they have. And so if I could, uh, Chair, turn it over to Vince to lead us in the conversation. Yeah, where would you like me to be? Where at maybe like a seat at the table over there, with like between Stephen and Amy would be great. Okay. Hi guys, as we already said, my name is Vince Sherry. I'm from Run Flagstaff. We own the local running shop here in town, um, as well as Run Sedona. We have a timing business, and we also run the local track club, which is probably most relevant to this discussion, at least for my part in it. Um, I was actually encouraged to reach out to Rebecca back in the fall, ironically enough, by the facilities manager at FUSD. Um, we, we ran track access from FUSD on a regular basis, as well as NAU to run our track practices there. Um, and Steve Brooke and Rickman and I <clears throat> reached out to Rebecca on the subject, which is a little bit ironic because he would be renting essentially from, it's, it's his job to run his access there. Um, but access has been an issue in Flagstaff for um, at least as long as I've been here, and it's been since 2006, and it remains a challenge despite the fact that we have four very good tracks in town. Um, and there's been a little bit of a push over the years to try and do a community track. We just didn't really know where to get started. Um, Rebecca, would you be able to share that? That the presentation? Yeah, probably best just to pull it from the link. Oh, I downloaded it. That's fine too. 
<laughs> I, I have no idea how up to speed you guys are on that or the running community. Um, Zero. Okay. Let me help okay. that. Yeah, that's good. All right. <laughs> I will start from the beginning ish. It's a, it's a long story, but but um, I'll, I'll do my best to make it concise as, as the record pulls this up. So Flagstaff has several tiers that make it one of the primary destinations for running in the entire country. Um, my personal interest in it revolves around the community because that's who our business serves. But in parallel with that, um, there is a local elite running community that's very, very strong. Um, lots of Olympians live in town and are residents of this town. Uh, and lots of people come to visit as well and, and conduct training camps here. And you'll see, see some statistics in the presentation. Um, What's the best way for us to kind of click through? Who would, who would help help me keep on track or? Yep. So just let me know. Okay. That, can you see that? Okay. That's, is that what we're yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. You can just move on to the, to the second one and I'll try and keep it in order. So the current state of Flagstaff track access, if you're a general community member, is zero. You, you cannot get on a public track in this town um, if you're just the general member of the community without just stepping on it hoping you don't get kicked off. Every track is fenced um, and governed by either FUSD or NAU. Obviously, you guys all know the state of things with, with public school systems and security in public school systems. That's not going to improve. Um, school hours are absolutely prohibited and after sports, they're generally locked. Team Run Flagstaff, which is the organization that we run, is the only organization that you can get public track access on. Um, we run that on Tuesday nights for one hour. We have anywhere from 200 to 450 members. Uh, it's a rolling annual membership, and it's $125 a year to participate. So inexpensive um, by the standard. However, Track access for team run flags out just went from $140 a month with FUSD to $640 a month with FUSD this month, um, which is pretty wild because we weren't talking about it for that reason at all. But right before this meeting, I got a call from Steve said, hey, inflation, we've kept you guys price low for a long time, and now it's $640. And he charges us about $90 per session. Not too bad, but much harder to access, and he is much harder to deal with. Um, and and their track is much more heavily used, so we could be conflicting with soccer practice. There's a million reasons. Did you um, say six hundred and forty dollars a month? A month. Six forty a month is what I pay right now with, for TRF. Um, keeping in mind, as I said, the annual membership due is one hundred twenty-five dollars a year. Uh, right now, Run Flagstaff, the store, funds Team Run Flagstaff practice. That is a losing proposition. That that club costs us money. In its current in its current state, um, and that gives you access to what tracks. We're we're currently on Copenhagen. Yeah, on Copenhagen yep. School Track. It we could we could request fly high. We could request um, well, we can you know you can make arrangements. We're at Copenhagen because that's what's open. That would be our preference too. I just think it's the nicest facility for our members. Um, but yeah, and then we share we share the stadium during that time of football. High school football practice runs at the same time, so you've got kind of jockey practice around football players and whatnot. Um, and the, the other point I was going to make specifically about the community component is our practice literally gets held one hour, one week at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday. I don't know how many of you happen to be available at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday, but if you're not, you don't have track. That's it, you know. So you can imagine the demand that must exist in the community if that was just open. You know, that would be huge. Um, we have a kids program that runs as well for about eight weeks, twice a year. Um, it's and, and we could do more with that. There's beginner programs, but we're, we're limited uh, in, in what we can do with that. The potential for what we could bring to Flagstaff if we we did have public track, youth development, community development, and Olympic development. Those things all exist here. They're just somewhat limited by the fact that we don't have regular access. You can continue. Keep going. Mm -hmm. 
the youth development component, uh, most school programs start in middle school. There is a little bit more demand for younger kids, and we can certainly run programs for younger kids. Um, summer programs as well. Schools don't run practice in the summer. Um, and over the holiday, Christmas break, and that, and that sort of thing. And then again, that's just our club specifically. There, there will be other folks in town interested. There is a population uh, density that's high enough that there will be additional programs beyond our own. I see your question. Sure. But there aren't others currently, it's just your program? There's one other kids program that I'm aware of in town. And they practice primarily in Buffalo Park. They do, they do not have track access at this time, again, because of price. It would be very good for you. Is that uh, Girls on the Run? Uh, girls on the Run is separate again, but yeah, that's also correct. And the Girls on the Run does not hold their practice on a track. It's Buffalo Park. Yeah. And I would think it would be reasonable to think that they would use it if it were available, yeah. just for variety, if nothing else. Um, a lot of the state facility for community members. Oftentimes people will run alone. Uh, we have a lot of trails and we do have great urban trail system, but if you're on your own, safety is a concern. Um, tracks more, the space is more consolidated. There will likely be other folks there. It just tends to be a safe, a little bit safer space than being out on the trail, especially it's much, it's much lower barrier to entry if you're entering the sport. It's easy to keep track of your distance, it's soft, it's maintained, you don't have to worry about rolling the ankle. Um, and again, safety is, uh, you know, usually, usually a, a public track is a very safe place to run. The Olympic development component is really interesting. Um, again, this isn't necessarily where my heart is in it because of the type of business that we run. But if you live here and you have pride in the community, it's pretty hard to ignore. Uh, I, mean, I was a competitive runner before I was a running store owner. I think it's, I think if you run or you don't run, it's just one of those things. It's, it's not much different in a lot of ways um, to how people come to town for astronomy. You know, Flagstaff is known for specific things, and this is one of the things. Um, we've got some statistic, statistics from Sean Anthony, Hypo2. Sean hosts a lot of athletes in town, and if you scroll to that next slide, next couple slides, That's, those are just a few, not just Olympians, but medalists. Uh, Molly Seidel is actually a resident. She's in the upper left-hand corner. She actually lives in town. Um, the others are visiting athletes, U.S. athletes. Um, Inger Brisson is the guy to the right. He's actually from Norway. They come to training camp all the way from Norway every single summer. Um, right up and down the road, probably. Uh, well, they're in Campbell, Campbell Mesa, most which is a half mile from our house. You see him out there five days a week. Uh, he has multiple gold medals, just won world championships three weeks ago in the in the 5K. So they and right off the training stint here. So the I mean the medal he has around his neck, he won training here. So it's pretty pretty wild. Where do these guys train if they're training here? So most often, Sean Anthony will get them access to a facility through Hypo 2. I actually wish Sean could be here. He couldn't be here today. Uh, he could go into the challenges that are involved in that. Sean most commonly partners with NAU. Um, we, we get indoor track access from NAU for the winter months. It's awesome to have it. I'm very thankful to have it. Don't get me wrong. And he was very hard to negotiate with for state and and in just in terms of community partnership that's not that's just not their objective so it's a constant challenge it's it's manageable i will say though several of the athletes that you see there holding those medals did not come to training camp in flagstaff this last go around and we can speculate on the reasons um several of the athletes went to park city last go and you could draw a conclusion that track access for their team could, could have led to that decision, most definitely. So we have seen some athletes go and not come back. Uh, 
and I think it's reasonable to establish that that, that challenge is part of the challenge. They are track athletes. Several of them are track athletes. Isn't it also true that it's not just runners that come here to train? It's all Olympic athletes. That's I meant like swimmers and yes. bicyclists. Yeah. Is there a reason the that the U.S. Olympics hasn't like put a maybe a zero? Yeah. You know. For somebody that knows zero about this, you ask them very important questions. So, Flagstaff used to be the USOC designated site. Part of the reason that we've not been able to get USOC designation again is specifically because we cannot make the case that we have easily accessible, accessible facilities for athletes at that level. This is a barrier to Flagstaff being an Olympic designated training site. Again, it was 13 years ago when um, NAU was partnered with the Center for High Altitude Training and athletes there had direct access to NAU's track. When NAU closed that program, we lost the USOC designation specifically for that reason. Sean, again, that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I was here during that era. I know what happened. Um, that is really Sean's department. 40 Let's see, I think it's 40, yeah, that's correct. 42% of the, of the 460 elite athletes that have come through Flagstaff to train for the Olympics since 2016 are runners. So 42% of the 460, to answer your question specifically. Um, so 460 elite athletes qualified from their countries have been through here since 2016, 42% specifically. This was an article, so Mike Smith is a, is a good friend and also the head coach at, coach at NAU. NAU has the winningest distance program in the country for the previous six or seven years. So since Mike has been head coach of that program, they've won more NCAA championships than any other, any other school in, in distance running specifically. Mike wrote an article, which uh, we emailed to Rebecca. I think she can share it with you. Um, but this is an excerpt from that article. Basically, if Flagstaff wants to pride itself on being the home of world class athletes, it's not enough to simply claim it. At some point, you have to welcome these people here and not push them away. And if you don't want to do that, then let's make sure we're careful about using the words running community because the second word should mean a lot more. That was an excerpt from an article in the Daily Sun that Mike wrote in 2010, six years before he was the head coach of at that time, he, it had been, Mike worked at the Center for High Altitude Training at NAU. That was one year after NAU had closed that program. At that time, Mike was working at Carmel Sushi, serving, <laughs> serving customers. Uh, and, and that was what he had to say about that back, back 12 years ago. Nothing whatsoever has changed since then. If anything, it's gotten more challenging. This was a case study done by uh, Mammoth Lakes. Um, Mammoth invested $2.3 million in their phase one program. Mammoth, I would say a decade before Flagstaff really became the training destination was a pretty significant training destination. They did not have the success with people coming to Mammoth specifically to train. And I'm sure that they have nowhere near the number of Olympians that we have. Um, however, the community did invest $2.3 million into a track facility. It was community funded, community raised. Um, and this is a really good example of a training facility that would very similarly mirror what we're looking to do. Um, they have multiple phases. I think in the end it was a four phase project. The first phase of that project was the track. And in 2012, it cost them $2.3 million to do it. Um, their facility is a full nine lane <clears throat> with straightaways. It would be much bigger than what we're proposing and more expensive, although inflation has certainly impacted us since then. But it gives you an idea. This has been done uh, in a somewhat similar community uh, and, and it can certainly be duplicated. And they have all the resources are available. They, they fully disclose the process and how they went about it online. This is a rough mock-up um, that we had done. The, there was a representative from Bates Sports Services that was in town. And this is the 
a Cheshire Park area, one of the of the pieces of property that I understand is designated to to a turf field, as we discussed. Um, Greg Hall at Bain was was kind enough to do a quick mock up for us of what it would look like if we were to put a six lane all weather polyurethane track around that turf field. They do both surfaces. They could do the entire project. His estimate was approximately $2 million for the whole thing. That's turf field and track. Six lanes would only be a training track that's not built for competition. Cuts down on costs. A uh, competition track is eight to nine lanes, depending. Uh, and of course, you see here that they've cut away the straightaways for sprints. We're not really a sprinter kind of destination at all. Um, so that piece is gone. That, that, there was some cost savings involved there as well. The track cost is approximately $750,000. The turf field cost, <clears throat> that was 701 point. Yeah, that's right. 1.25750 is what his breakdown was. Would this be a good facility? No. So for that, for that no, we would not. Yeah. He, so we specifically spoke with them about the services and just essentially getting that piece done. So that cost is entirely based upon the turf and the track. And that's it. Prep, start to finish. Parking, lighting, restrooms. That's a whole other conversation. And well, as I'm in the house, I just don't know. And then is the track um, heated for wintertime use? It is not, um, nor have I, I'm sure that that exists. I've personally never seen that. So are you aware of track with radiant heating? I know. No, I'm not, I've seen tracks that are like in Alma Sakara that have a bubble over the track, but even that track is not 400 meters to six long. I was going to ask, is this a 400 meter track still? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a full 400 meter track. It's regulation size. We had talked about the turf field. The turf field use that you guys were looking for makes for a really great training track because it's not a football field. So most of what dictates the shape of the track is the fact that it's a football field. Football fields are more narrow and tall. Soccer fields are wider and not as long, which means that we can put the straightaways to 80 meters and the curves at 120 meters. And if you're a distance runner, which is most of what this town has, that's much more advantageous. You don't have tight turns, you have kind of long sweeping turns and shorter straightaways, which is advantageous from a training perspective. Um, it also just makes, I think, for a nicer infield area. You've got plenty of room to stand between the curves and the field themselves. So for a practice facility, it's pretty ideal. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dylan said he's going to buy a place now. I said he knows where he's going to buy it. <laughs> it just works out. So. Um, just for reference, the Sonata field, is that a football field with the track around it, or is that a soccer field? Because I know like, I, I teach at MPA, and our kids, all that's where they practice in soccer. But is it a football field? It is a football field, yes. yes. So, is the, so this location, has there been any other proposed locations, or is this kind of the one? From what Rebecca and I spoke about, there were three potentially available locations based on. Based yeah, on I, I can address that if you'd like. Yeah, okay. um, I just let him know some of the areas that we had previously prioritized for, uh, like the bond measures when we were discussing those with City Council. Because my thought was it'd be great to get a win win in a, a partnership and so to incorporate a track into something that we already know is a need so we talked about continental we talked about um, the christensen parcel that's that rapid facility that we've talked about a few times and we talked about uh, the turf um, multi-purpose fields at cheshire cheshire just seems to be more fitting um, and frankly, a little more has more potential because of the lower price tag. Um, we still obviously have a lot to work out. This is 
I'm right next to ADOT, Highway 180. So, you know, Amy went through a little bit of an analysis on like where existing easements are, where is the foot's trail, where might we need to put parking, where might, you know, would ADOT even let us do a decel lane? We don't know. We don't have the answers to those yet, but we wanted to get this on the commission's radar, especially as you guys are talking about priorities. Um, because this commission, and frankly, in my um, tenure here with Parks and Rec, we have not really talked about this need. Um, so that's why I wanted to get it on the radar. How much parking do you anticipate needing for this? If it were a multi purpose deal, I counted the spaces that are at four park multi purpose, and I think I can't remember what I put in the email um, was it 60 to 65 spaces or on that document? I can't remember, Amy. I don't know that we need to. I mean, no, remember, I think the track is probably going to be minimum parking compared to the multi purpose. Right. Yes. It's pretty great. Yeah, and that was part of what pushed us on that location specifically. It's centrally located, it's easy to access, and having the ability to have access to the urban trail right there is pretty phenomenal. Um, that's not to say that if there was some sort of significant obstacle that we couldn't do and be successful somewhere else. This was just for the sake of a mock up. If it was pie in the sky, what's the preference? You know, when we looked at what was available. You mentioned Fort Park as well, I think. You know how to squeeze it in. Yeah, we talked about the Fort Park annex since we're going through that public. So that's the old public works yard um, area. I don't know where this would fit in there. And we're kind of towards the tail end of that public process. And it hasn't really come up. Location-wise, that would be another great one. But you can see the scope of this here. It was interesting because when we were standing there with Greg, um, he looked at it and was like, oh, this is a ton of room. He does this. He, he built the track in the gene. You know, this is his whole deal. And then he sent this to me and like, tighter fit than I thought. And it, it's very, it's really weird when you're standing there looking at that space, how big it looks. And then when you put it down, how, how far to the edges it really is, the track's up a lot of room. I mean, that's the. Is there more room to the south? East. <coughs> or what, what are approximately the, the property boundaries that you have to consider? We on shape. I know you have to do the It's like a triangle. Um, if you bear with me, I can just bring up Google Maps real quick. Or if you want, Rebecca, I can share the. Do you have the GIS? I do. Um, go for it. <laughs> um, and I'm just wondering if, you, if that's shoehorned in there to. Right sure, we do have a handout as well. Just it's a green shaded space there. That is all the Cheshire Park is too. Commissioner Linsky, you've got a, a question? <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. I was just wondering in this uh, schematic. It uh, seems like fencing would be required around this to keep, you know, deer, elk, skateboarders, et cetera, off the track. Is that correct? We we actually hope to not. So one of the, one of the things that the community comes up against that's so frustrating is a fence. And I, again, I, from a cost perspective, fencing is expensive. And the other piece of it is that 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 environment right now is is pretty much open space and kind of in the spirit of, of reducing the impact in that area i think it would be really cool that we had talked about the idea of doing something like I think buffalo fence does the fencing for the urban trail and some of the fencing around the park we were just thinking of doing a simple split rail fence something that goes with the rest of the fencing around, which would, which would have minimal impact on wildlife, actually. Um, but I think that there are things, it's a community facility, I think there are things that we can do 
programs wise in the community to keep the track of the turf field clean, even if wildlife did get on it overnight. Skateboarders don't like turf, mountain bikers. It's, it's just not, it's not that sort of draw. There's nothing, you know, there's no rails to grind the skateboard on. There's no terrain for a mountain biker. There's, it, it wouldn't see much. A track isn't going to see much of that sort of thing. There's currently a front spring that runs along the adjacent to the bus trail. Yeah, along the way, yeah, and that's fabricated in installed by parks. I have a general question. I don't know how close you are to wrapping up. I don't know if you want me to save it for the end. No, yeah, no, of course, go ahead. What? So you said they lost it in 2013, speculating it could have been because that ain't was hard work with them. Get that. Yeah. What has prevented them? Meaning that being the Olympic, yes. whoever from approaching the city of Flagstaff and saying, We like your altitude, how can we work with you? What has been the what has been the barrier between them doing something like that? How I guess what's what's weird to me is how long have you been doing this, Rebecca? Eight years with recreation. I'm just curious. <laughs> why they haven't said something, because I was always under the impression that this was like everybody from the Olympics came here. A lot of this is totally new to me. I, I didn't know that we were. You mean that this is something that we could have or should have done prior to my yeah. up? Why, why didn't they? I, the, I, think, I think the person besides myself that would have had the incentive to do it was Sean. And I think that the reason that Sean hasn't done it, and I can't speak for him, I can only speculate based on what I know. I, I think Sean has always been hopeful that, and, and honestly, most efficiently, you would build those relationships. You would build a relationship with people in town and you would get access to a facility that's already here. It costs a significant amount of money. It's work. Um, and, and Sean, like myself, you know, you're, you're running a business. And I think you want to do that in the most efficient way possible. And this is a significant sort of thing to work on. It's a significant sort of thing to fundraise for. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm, I mean, best served on track practices and selling shoes. Sean is best served, you know, um, working with athletes. And recently when we came together about this, I think it's it's been 13 years and it just hasn't happened. And we, meaning that we... We've worked with the people that you work with to build these relationships, and people and people transition. You get lucky sometimes, and you get a facilities manager that loves running and really wants to help you out, that gets it, that, that is a fan of the sport, um, or that really has like a heart for the community. And then sometimes you just get people that want to do their job and go home at five and not mess with the ancillary stuff. And whatever revenue we generate is not going to be meaningful enough. NAU. It's not going to be meaningful enough at FUSD, and the people that are responsible for maintaining those relationships are far enough down that even if the revenue were generated, it still doesn't impact their job. Nobody's getting a raise because they got this track access. Nobody's getting a raise or a kudos because, you know, Team Run Flagstaff got on the indoor track during, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. They're, they're running basketball games and football practices. You know, this is very ancillary. And does, does the Olympics... I don't even know what you would call them. The company that is the Olympics, who is that? The USOC. Yeah. Why haven't they pressed this harder? They don't have to. Because they just, they're good. good. They're good. They have the same sort of thing. They have their own priorities. And there are, there are three current designated um, sites already in the U.S. And the athletes come here, right? they want to come here anyway. If they don't, they go to another U.S. designated facility and that's enough. It, it is a privilege and an honor for the town that's designated to be an Olympic training site to be designated an Olympic training site, not the other way around. It's not, the U.S. Olympic Committee is not like, man, we finally nabbed Flagstaff. You know, that's well, it's, and, it's, and I'm not it's got I'm like that. I'm looking at how does Flagstaff say that? How does Flagstaff say we finally nabbed that? Yeah, and that, that is Sean's deal. 
That is that is his drive. He's been working on it for over 10 years and he just can't quite get it. And this yeah, is part of the reason. He's also been working with our economic vitality. That's right. Yeah. Um, so the city's working on it. It's, it's, there's a lot of potential communities out there, I'm guessing. We've got a lot of competition and just like bringing in any business. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of incentives to offer other than elevation. We don't have the facilities already built. Um, but I do maybe want to, if I can, share, kind of bring us back to, and Amy, if I could share. Is everyone good with the GIS image? Yeah. I see Commissioner wants to be her hand. Commissioner Linsky, did you still have a question? No, sorry. Thank you. So let's let um, Vince wrap up his conversation. Whoops, you don't want to see my notes. Um, and then Vince, I'm not sure if you were going to touch on it. Um, might you have any thoughts on potential funding for this and partnerships? Yeah, there are a couple really distinct avenues. Um, Sean, myself, um, I've discussed it with, with Mike Smith a fair amount uh, just because he's, he's been through it and knows the history. Uh, he's also still the head coach of Team Run Flagstaff, uh, as well as Ben Rosario over in Northern Arizona. And We've been talking about what would be ideal. I think there is a, fun, a community funded portion. You know, it's just a traditional kind of GoFundMe sort of thing where you pop this thing up and anyone who has the incentive or the inclination to help donate would, would do so. Um, we've got some levers that we can pull on that to make that fun. T-shirts and all sorts of promo stuff for folks that want to kick in. Um, you know, the bricks with the names or the clock with the scoreboard everyone funded. So certainly on the community front, small business front, you know, NACA helps fund things like the races. We've got companies in town that, that help with that. And all of the athletes that train in this town are sponsored by brands that we also sell, shop. And they would have a vested interest because their athletes come here, want to come here, and it, it helps them. And and there are places where they would pay a significant amount more to train. Flagstaff is not the most expensive place you can stay for a couple months. So it's reasonable to say that there's some brand leverage as well. And we, because of our connections, you know, as coaches of college team, elite team, you know, running retail store owners, um, we have a lot of connections in those industries. So raising the funds to build this would not be our most significant obstacle. I think our most significant obstacle would be securing the property. Um, and that was kind of, that was going to be our ask. And I'm, I'm still not entirely clear on, on the budget component for the field, but I was going to ask if we were able to raise 750 to a million to cover the track and maybe kick in some more for facilities like a restroom or a parking lot. And the city would have funds set aside for the field if that we could partner and get our half of this covered in order to ensure it would happen, um, assuming that we could, could have access to the property. And you know, for that, we, for the for the track itself, we wouldn't ask for any city funding. I don't. I think that we could raise those funds independently. The money we have budgeted for the field that we was proposed in that space to be given. I believe that was three million to include like the deselling parking lot relocation of the urban trail and the artificial turf. You know, probably some walkways, benches, things like that. So that was another reason that I gravitated towards this property. Um, 
because I think with the partner bringing a decent amount of funding to the table, the possibility of a grant and then leveraging city funds and private funds um, seems like a pretty cool project that we get some grant leverage. Um, and that's about the price range that grants would come in. I think the maximum grant I've seen is Land and Water Conservation Fund, and that's about a million dollars. If you, it's it's five hundred thousand with a fifty percent match, which we might be able to get a state grant to help with that fifty percent match. Um, and then if the city was able to fund a little. A little from our BBB recreation funds, um, that, might, that might help us get there. Another place you can go that has grants is the Arizona Community Foundation. There's a Flagstaff farm up here, and that would those grants are actually fairly easy to write. That would be another place that you get putting yourself in front of ACF also puts you in front of. Bunch of different organizations up here to about uh, the uh, Forest Islands. The Forest Islands Foundation is pretty good size. They give away quite a bit of money. And do they fund nonprofits? Like that's why you're working at Benson, not us. <laughs> is that what you mean? I I have no idea who. Okay. I mean, I would imagine this would be a kind of a nonprofit project. Um, we should probably wrap the conversation. Did you have anything else? That's, you've got no. a couple more great slides that I wanted to make sure. <laughs> I mean, Dylan works super hard on the slides. So probably <laughs> scroll through those so it doesn't feel like I wasted this time on it. But. Maybe, I thought these could we wrap this up sure. maybe by just saying what are, what would be the next steps if we were to consider this and go down that road I mean, as far as private funding from you or are you already looking at those sources currently or I mean, we've we've only been discussing because I, I think that to really approach anyone we would have to have a pretty firm commitment that we're going to that we have the opportunity. So, and that's, I guess that the next step would be if this is something that you feel like would be feasible and, and that you'd like to move forward, you know, I just see that direction on what that involves. Um, I've not tackled a project like this before, I'm capable of it, but um, I can be in service of it however I need to be. So, let me know what the next step would be and how we can help. I think for our next steps, we would need some recommendations from the commission that this is an important project. Um, the next thing I believe on our agenda is talking about your priorities, and this was not on your list okay. to consider. So we might want to redo our survey that we did at the last meeting. I don't know. Um, so we can talk about that in the next agenda item. Um, we also have on tonight's agenda the review of the BBB recreation five-year plan and so that you can see what that looks like since we've built in some capacity for funding projects and my intent was to go from your priorities to the BBB plan and start building that plan out in the next five years and um, what you'd like to see based on your priorities is may or may not change that, but that's kind of the next thing that we'll be talking about is your priorities where this falls on the list. I want to make sure the commission understands so that, it, um, how do I say it? When, when opportunities come along that you feel are important, and we have potential partnerships and private investment happening. If the timing is right and it's not in your top priorities, you'll need some flexibility with you all, and you all will need that flexibility to be able to say, you know, well, maybe this project 
was our priority, but it has these obstacles that we haven't worked through, but this one is sitting right in front of us and we can take care of it now. Um, that's what I want you all to be thinking of to help us with those decisions. I know you said this doesn't have a huge economic impact to build something like this, but I'm sure it is. Yeah, there, well, I think it's the, the visiting athletes come through town generate over a million dollars a year to annual revenue. So I'm sure that if you're aware of the stuff Sean's working on, you're aware of all of that, right? So um, yeah, there there is an economic component. I mean, this is like one step in in the in the direction of becoming back, getting ourselves back on a list yeah. that we were on 13 years ago. I think it would enhance something that's already happening here tremendously. Well, thanks, Vince. We yeah. appreciate it. Of course. Mm -hmm. Thanks for thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And that does kind of lead right into our, our next agenda. Thank you, Bill. Into uh, results of the prioritization exercise from July's meeting. Oh, so, hang on. We had a, a oh, hand we have a question. Oh, of course. Commissioner Martin, you had a question. Um, I don't necessarily have a question in regards to this action item. Um, I was just going to have a response to what Rebecca was suggesting for our next action items. How would you like to proceed with that? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. So then I guess we are in the discussion item B, results of the prioritization exercise. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> I thought I had a right one and I just realized I do not. Now we're just going to all reconsider again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know where it is. Yes, we can hear you, All right, so thanks once again to Beck who helped put this together. Um, so are you ready for your big reveal? <laughs> <laughs> this is that. So well, we, we know what's not on there. Right, yeah, this so, picture is. That was a total. And I, I, do, <laughs> I do want to make sure. Um, and I, I would have said this obviously with Vince in the room. We also don't necessarily want to change your entire plan because we have one really good plea for, for help. Just keep in mind that. No, but I like what you said just a minute ago about being opportunistic. Right. And if private investment is willing to open up a million dollar pocketbook, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I can't even say it. Money talks. <laughs> that is, that would, that's an incredible opportunity, not just for you know things that we can do, but that is a that is a step in the direction that the city. You know, I always like to do stuff that brings more attention and more uh, stuff to Flagstaff, and that is a very cool thing. I didn't know we lost a designation 13 years ago. I had no idea that that even existed. So. So a couple of commissioners out there. Yeah, so uh, Commissioner Kalinsky, do you have your hand up? Yes, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, I just wanted to comment on that too, if you don't mind. Uh, a couple things came to mind while while Mr. Sherry was talking, and, and one of them is that uh, I have gone to PT at Hypo2, where Sean Anthony uh, has his business and welcomes a lot of the athletes and there's a very large poster in the lobby when you're waiting for your pt uh showing all of the olympic athletes that participated in the most recent uh at uh olympics both paralympics and um the other olympics that trained here in flagstaff and it was a very large number and my question would be when he said that nau was so difficult to work with in terms of using their track at the high altitude center which 
I understood was a place where they were, you know, hoping to bring in elite athletes to the high altitude center, not turn them away. And if the swimmers and other participants in the Olympics are able to come here and train without problems using NAU facilities, I'm just curious why the track is so problematic. And then secondly, um, I'm just thinking about all the sports groups that have been waiting a long time for something. Um, and then this one comes along and I was interested in what Ms. Uh, Commissioner Stackhouse was saying about, you know, why did why is it taking you so long to come and ask for this? And so I, I would just have some caution about going ahead with something like this ahead of the other sports who have been waiting longer, like softball and different things. So anyway, those were just my thoughts. Did I lose everybody? I think we may have lost the room. I'm, I'm here. There we go. And Rebecca, the room is Are you all still there? just as a heads up. Can you hear us now? Yes, we can. Awesome. It helps if you unmute. Um, so we're getting, we got, we lost internet. We are reconnecting and Commissioner Glinsky, you were in the middle of a sentence. Yes, please go ahead. The last we heard was poster. The last you heard was what? Poster. He has a large poster. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Sean Anthony has a very large poster in the lobby when you're waiting to get your uh, to see your PT that shows all of the athletes, Paralympic and otherwise, um, that trained in Flagstaff for the most recent Olympics. And so it, I'm just curious as to if those swimmers and divers and other people who have come to the High Altitude Training Center at NAU, which was my understanding was there to welcome and um, uh, encourage elite athletes to Flagstaff, why he has so much trouble with NAU and the track when Sean Anthony's other sports like swimming and diving seem to use NAU facilities just fine for their Olympic training. That is a curious thing to me. And secondly, um, I would just have caution about moving forward on a project like this after, especially after Commissioner Stackhouse brought up the point that, you know, what took you so long to come to us and ask for this. Um, and I would just have caution about that when we have so many other sports groups that have been waiting a very long time, like softball and et cetera. Um, so that's just my thought. Can I, can I try to address um, the first part of your question? Um, just since uh, Vince and Dylan had left already, Commissioner, we can't ask them that question, although it would have been a great one um, for them to answer. But it was my understanding that it might be just uh, presented to us, but it's not that they cannot access, it's just that it's it's gotten expensive to access. And NAU has very limited availability. I know that NAU works very directly with Hypo2, so I think he's got some established contracts, but for other runners outside of that, it's difficult. So um, what my understanding, what Vince is asking for is something that's for the entire community, not just for elite athletes. Hopefully that helps a little bit. 
And then Commissioner Ryan, do you have or uh, Martin, do you have your hand up as well? I, I, I share the same feelings as Commissioner Linsky. We, we have, like, I would believe, would be generations of softball players coming to ask us for, for similar needs of their own structure. I am, I am concerned about the idea that we would be focusing on something that maybe residents, we would try to bring in further residents to Flagstaff to benefit from this particular item. But we have current Flagstaff residents who are who are suffering, and I am concerned that if that we are to restart this whole entire process of our priorities because of this last minute agenda item, I am I am I am voicing concern that we would be doing that. I feel like I I, I feel like we just have heard over the past year, whole groups of thirty people show up to our meetings. To, to discuss about their priorities, I I am not there today, but I am I don't see that type of support coming out. Can I, uh, I I hear that I as I'm just thinking about this, like the Cheshire Park's already been kind of on our radar as something that's important, and if the track community the the running community is willing to chip in to put a track around the Cheshire Park that we already find valuable and like has been part of our priorities. I don't see what the, the problem necessarily is if that's if they're willing to invest in, in partner with the city on. So I understand that and I, I'm super on board with softball and all things football that we've seen in the country. Like, My concern as well is that we, this will take a time away from our other priorities that we have because we would be needing to be seeking a grant to fund this option item while people have been waiting to for us to complete grants for their items, from my understanding. So what are the dimensions of this softball field? <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not hear you. Uh, I, I guess I was just curious what the dimension of the softball field were and how that was soccer. That you could put in the middle of a track. I think you might be able to put in the middle of a track. It would need fencing to keep the balls from conflicting with Okay. track runners um but one of the issues with for girls softball is that there are not fields all in one location like there are for little league they're at this park 15 minutes away at this park and another distance for another one um so putting that one field for whichever age group we would elect not sure if they'd be that seen as that advantageous for the softball user group you had already um, slated a multi-use field. We had, had yes. Location, so Correct. So whether it's a soccer field or just a multi-use. Multi yeah. I mean, it could be rugby, it could be flag football, it could be soccer, it could be a bunch of user groups. Good question, though, but I do think then, unfortunately, we have to have a fence up around the outfield. Dug out, you got to you know, everything. There's no other questions. Should we, should we Let's make sure um, that Commissioner Martin's question was answered. I had to mute him from the background noise that we were getting. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to hearken concern that, you know, yes, this may be a great opportunity, but I, I think this will require much deeper thought. And if we do want to I think if we do want to put this onto the priority list, maybe it's not a good time for this meeting to do so. Where this is all, where we need maybe a little bit more time to consider this one. Agreed. They've waited this long, Commissioner Martin. We can, they can probably wait a little bit longer. I mean, I do agree with the softball statement. So. But I do. I don't think this is something we should necessarily push away, but maybe table, as you just suggested. 
Ms. Shalensky, you have a comment, question? Yes, thank you. And and I I just wanted to add that I I would I would like to hear from Sean Anthony personally. One of the things I saw that Mr. Sherry continually said, um, well, I don't know that would be Sean Anthony. Oh, I don't know Sean Anthony would know about that. I don't know. That's not my department. So I would like to hear from Sean Anthony. I mean, I'm not opposed to this at all. And especially if there's a possibility that we're going to receive some, you know, um, collateral funding for it. But um, I, I would like to hear from Sean Anthony and see what what his thoughts are, what his numbers are, what his, you know, who he thinks he can get money from. And um, I like the idea of incorporating it into something that's already on our priority list, like the Cheshire Park. Um, I think that's a fine idea. I, I just would like to just exercise caution in terms of prioritizing it over some things that have been on the list for a long time. That was that was mainly my point. Thank you. Um, yeah, so he he was invited um, and I did see him on a couple of the emails that Vince and I shared. Um, but we'll, I'll try to reach back out to Vince and get Sean's contact information and see if they can both come back. Um, we'll see how the rest of our agenda goes today and determine what month might be best for them to come back. Thank you. And Beck, if you could please put a note or a comment in the meeting minutes to remind me to do that, that would be great. You got it, Rebecca. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so let me share. After much delay, wait for your priorities. Oh, no, no, I've got it on the wrong. All done. It's like a Parks and Rec reality show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels like that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now we're back to it. And I'm trying to get this one open. Woo! Okay, so just a reminder, of how you guys did the survey, you ranked everything from one to ten. You could have multiple, you know, you didn't have to rank them all in order. What we did was we took the total of points um, from all the commissioners for each project, and that's how we ranked what you will see here. And that might be hard to read, so we're going to go over the top ten in the next slide. But um, Really quickly, the top priority based on points was play structure replacements. And then um, towards the bottom, because we're not going to spend time on these today, uh, was splash pad, sanitary expansion, the Josie Montoya Outdoor Fitness Center, the Aquaplex play structure, and cemetery rotary repair. Um, so those are at the bottom for those that might not be able to see it very well, including those of us in the room. So now let's look at your top 10. Because I think this is where you're going to want to spend the most time um, and um, possible funding. So at the top was the play structure replacements. And um, as Amy described last month, these are structures that are aging out. Um, we might be able to get some grants for these, but I think it's better to just have them funded. It's nice to see that's your top priority. Um, existing restroom upgrades and remodeling. As we work on this, I'm going to ask the commission for a little bit more input on what, because we talked about a lot of the time. Um, potential projects and problems. So I'd like to narrow down where the commission's ideas were when they rated this a high priority. And um, the smart irrigation system add-ons is a top priority. The Hal Jensen Recreation Center HVAC unit, this was for 
the back part of the facility, including the gym and the, the fitness center and the racquetball courts. Uh, the Continental Park added ball fields. Again, remember that was just an idea to perhaps phase some things in. We're not going to be able to do the full $13 million project, but if we can do one or two million dollars at a time, maybe, and, it, and to Amy's point that she brought up earlier, um, that's not what they're asking for, one or two at a time, because they have that already, but eventually we can build it out. Uh, the Thorpe Park Annex phases was next. This is the community engagement process that we're going through right now, so no details on that yet. It's just, um, you know, that eventually we'll need some funding to get developed. The Ponderosa Park renovation post-flooding um, was the next priority, then LED field lighting, score court repair and reconstruction, and then foots repair and replacement. So that was your top 10. We did get um, all seven commissioners were here and voted. And do you guys have any discussion on that? Commissioner Lipsky. Uh, not really a discussion. I just wanted to say that I noticed uh, when I was at Thorpe Park today, the new play structure um, there, and it's really nice and looks great. It is. She clearly has. Oh, we're back. I think we're back. Can you hear us? Can you hear you? Yes, Brian. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Or at least I can. And I'm in hope. Sure. You cut out on us there, Commissioner. Can you, can you uh, put that on and reiterate your point? Did you not hear me again? You cut out on us. Sorry. Sorry, I must have some static electricity or something that <laughs> I'm impacting everything. Um, I just wanted to say I was at Thorpe Park today and I saw the new play structure there and it's wonderful. So just want to let you know it looks great. Am I gone again? Hey guys. I can hear you from this one. Thank you for that feedback, Commissioner. I think these look pretty on par with what I thought. Yeah. So it's going to be a dumb question, but now what? <laughs> so we'll go over, that's why I have on your agenda the BBB five year plan. We'll go over that next. Um, would anyone of you commissioners like to give any insight into that existing restroom upgrade remodeling item as to why that was important to you and what if if any if there was any specific focus? Can you put the didn't we have descriptions of the issues? Yes. I mean, there are a bit of I can't remember. Uh, we did. We had a list of. Yeah, I can put that. I wonder if you put that up. That might ring a bell. Evaluate the features. Yeah. 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 For upgrades and or remodeling needs to protect the asset. Is there something that you ad lib and said that would have made us? So we talked about the Heritage Square restrooms, but I see that there are some hands up, and I don't want to. Um, I don't want to influence what those might say. So maybe so, they could go ahead. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Commissioner Martin first. 
If I remember correctly, we were given the options of the restrooms. Um, there was the operating general restrooms, probably away from the porta potties, and to actual restrooms or improving the restrooms that we currently have. But there was also the discussion about the restrooms at Heritage Square and making those more visible out of the alleyway. Um, that was, I think, a major part in probably the voting of this is making those more visible with the idea of making those restrooms more usable and less vandalized. Right. I think that's correct. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was like, to be honest, I don't think I voted that for very high. So that's not my contribution. So I don't know uh, personally the context for that because I, I voted for other things. Yeah. Commissioner Lipsky. Thank you. Um, from my memory, I thought the Heritage Square restroom was a separate item list. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than from the existing rec restroom upgrades for my voting purposes, I was thinking about upgrades from the porta potties, uh, specifically at Thorpe. And there was discussion by a community member, uh, a, a question by a community member who was present. Uh, I think it was Jana Perpich about um, adding some sort of bathroom access to Hal Jensen for the tennis courts. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, that's what influenced me. Yeah, Herod, you're correct. Heritage Square restroom was a different item and it's towards the bottom of the priority list. Okay, well, thank you for that feedback. And um, I think we all just can agree we'd like to have a nice place to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Maybe. Always. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm trying to give you some feedback. Yep. Okay, we're good. Thank you very much. Um, so let's move. If, if everybody's ready, we can move on to the next agenda. Nothing more on item B. We'll move on to item C. B, 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 recreation five-year plan. Let's see if I have that one correct. Is that crystal clear for everybody? Kidding. That's for us old guys. Right? Me neither. See what I can do to get this. That's weird. What you all are seeing is not what's on my screen. So it's kind of convenient that I can see that, um, but it's not true. Hang on.
फिर भी So Amy put in the chat that they keep losing connection at the Aquaplex, so I believe it's just connectivity issues on their end, but they should be back up shortly. We will keep you posted. Uh, sit tight. <laughs> Out there. I've started getting back into the running. I go up to Camel Mason. I'm like, <gasps> and they're all right. Just going. Yeah. Like, I'm dying. All right. Can you guys hear us? Yep, we can see and hear you. Thank you. Okay. We keep listening. Yeah. Are you there now? Yes, in an effort to not jinx it, yes, you're back. <laughs> I have to rejoin here. Here, you rejoin. Oh, we can't because okay, I'm gonna try to do my phone. Okay, this is gonna be fun. We could also just adjourn if we need. Well, if it works on my phone for another 30 seconds, we're going to keep it up. It's also just really having at the front desk, I'm sure. Yep, <laughs> we're on that one yet. <laughs>
Um, so we're just going to say that and leave it where it is. The way that we planned out this next year was with some pretty open categories of projects. We have a few. We have a few that are identified. A pros master plan will be is funded for this year, so that's parks, rec, open space events master plan. That's to redo our existing one. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, thank you. <laughs> what a novel idea to bring you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, but you'll see here that we set aside $600,000 each year for a grant match. And we set aside 200,000 for deferred maintenance projects. And then what is funded this year, and again, this is just BBB recreation funding. This is not our only funding source. But we also have $100,000 funded in Fort Park Annex and 700,000 in sport courts. These are the pickleball courts for Bushmaster Park. So eventually what we will want your help with, and that's where these priorities were leading us, is what we'll do as staff is go back with your priorities, put some cost estimates to those, and then we can start plugging them into these next five years that you see out here on the right. So we might adjust our grant match up or down to make some funds available for um, for a project that was on the priority list, we might, um, instead of saying 200,000 for deferred maintenance, a couple of the items on your priority list are deferred maintenance. We'll put a name to that project and we'll put that in the five-year plan. So I wanted you to see um, that this, that hopefully you can see my cursor um, circling, is what we will start building out to see our next five years in these specific projects that will be completed based on your priorities. Any questions? That is all just BBB funding, correct? This is just BBB funding. I see down the bottom the transfers out of general fund. That's different. Yes. So this is from BBB recreation out to our other operating costs. So as Amy mentioned earlier, they maintain the foot. So this this is where some of that funding comes from to fund those other items. Parks operations and recreation operations are now capped at these amounts through the extent of the five-year. Um, plan, which is a that's different this year, um, especially recreation has been increasing every year, and we requested to have that cap, and any increases be paid out of general fund so that we have more ongoing availability to use for projects. Any other questions? And right now, sorry, we can't see hands, so. <laughs> so again, Rebecca, what are the next steps in regards to that? And you said putting together some costs associated with specific projects. So we will take and I'm just seeing Commissioner Martin your note. Greg, can you confirm that you can see the five year plan on the screen? Yes, I can see it on my end, but I believe um, Commissioner Martin left and rejoined the meeting, so I assume that fixed the problem. Um, Commissioner Martin, are you still having issues seeing the presentation? Looks like he's not on. 
So yeah, the next step is we'll take your priorities. We'll create some cost estimates for those probably just the top five and start seeing how we can plug those in as we're preparing for budget for this next year. Can we see, can we see what the top five were from what I just Yeah. Was it to expand on that? Um, I think like a phased approach to both. The top five are play structures, restrooms, irrigation, pelvis, and incontinent. Is there an opportunity for us to see about how much each one, like the, of the top ten, are? That's what we need to do next. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. I say we price out all ten. Okay. I thought it was. Seven and eight cost about the same as five. Maybe we do seven and eight versus five. Or more things like that. What was that suggestion? I know I actually really that. like that. So if, if we see the costs for everything, once they're all kind of broken out for the top 10, if, if we see that seven and eight are equitable to to the cost input for number five, we could get more things done for the same money. So we, we could do two projects instead of just one. And I actually think that's worth seeing at least the top 10 kind of priced out to see what everything would cost before we absolutely conclude. Okay, so we will cost out the top 10 Estimates and try to bring those back in September. That works. I'm sorry, what did you say? You answered our question. You're good. You're still here. We're good. <laughs> I'm still here. Anything else? Are we finished with that topic at this point? Yeah. <laughs> and then just a general question. The, the PBB tax itself is going into discussion for potential raising in several years, correct? Wait, 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 I can't remember which year that has to be put on the balance. So it expires in 2026. So I believe it would be I think it expires in the eight, and so we're planning on going forward. For a renewal, not necessarily to raise it, but a renewal at the same rate, um, depending on what council wants to do in 2024. Oh, okay. And then that gives us 2026 to try it again. If it fails. Or it expires in 28. Gotcha. Okay. And I'm sure those discussions will be happening. 
like we'll have those we're, here. we're having those discussions now at the staff level oh, to okay. start prepping for 24. But um, specifics related to that ballot question are the council is not having those discussions quite yet. We're focused on 22. Yeah, because that's not necessarily a bond issue. It's a, a, like a bait. Is it a bait? It's a, it's a tax. A tax. A okay. people. Gotcha. Valid question. Okay. Is there any potential of raising it or no? Like that's not a, even. I shall not be up to the city council at the time that it gets put on the ballot for 24. Gotcha. Like, Sorry, we're not in a recession. Yeah, sure. So given our connectivity issues, Chair, I would actually suggest perhaps we table the next agenda item to next month unless maybe you really want to do it. I can do it. I can go. I don't. I want you to be able to say When some of it's a repeat though, of what we just discussed, it may go real well. Do you all want to try it? That's fine. 25 minutes left. Right. Okay. So we're going to go over um, some items um, where so going to cover some things is regarding our operating capital and then some of the capital that Rebecca was just sharing with our EV company. Um, some of this is a presentation that was delivered to our budget team during our budget cycle which might help spell some of the story and some things that we're talking about. So we'll hit the park section first. Wow, that is really slow delay. There we go. Uh, this was helpful for, I think, our budget team, which are city staff, but this may be helpful for our commission also, where what really does parks maintain? So part of a story that we told this past year was everything like the what, the how, and who the heck are we in the park section. So just for everyone's uh, knowledge, there's roughly 700 acres, there are 24 parks of developed land. There's 58 and a half miles of the urban trail system. There's miles of beautified streetscape. So like sometimes it's referred to as right of ways or sometimes it's referred to as BBB areas. Um, so over the, those green circles on that map there, there's over 5,000 street trees that we're responsible for maintaining. And then, you know, amenities are sport courts, play structures, athletic fields, disc golf courses, dog parks, skate parks, furnishings, facilities like a restroom, so it's, you know, it's a building. And then the civic spaces that are primarily around City Hall, libraries, Wheeler Park downtown. There's also a cemetery that, as when we were talking about that list uh, last month, it's 36 acres in size and it's included it's full service that we provide there. Some pretty well stuff. Um, so that just gives like a general story of who, what does parks really do throughout their seven days a week. Um, we're granted each fiscal year $255,000 for what we call operating capital. So that's where I sit down with my coworkers in parks and we start lining out what are we going to spend $255,000 on? What are our big needs? A recent one that uh, Commissioner Linsky was mentioning was that age two to five play structure we replaced at Fort Park. We were like, let's let's knock that out. That the slides were obsolete. We couldn't find parts any longer, kind of thing. So for this fiscal year, what Parks has decided to do is we're delivering permanent restrooms to Thorpe Park. I know we talked about that. Um, I think last month. Um, we're partnering with Open Space and going to provide some funding for some like invasive weed species, um, some abatement that can mitigation that can occur there. We tend to set aside some funds for urban trail uh, railing replacements. That image there is along the Karen Cooper Trail, which is also along the Rio de Flag, where it's this old vinyl fencing. It falls apart a lot, bikes crash into it, what have you. Where our latest version that we've been doing for greater of 10 years is the steel tubing. Um, that was it's pretty rough, yeah. <laughs> It's seen better days. So we've identified that 
that with our operating capital. Again, that's those are things that we do internally. Also, this year in our operating capital would be $1.5 million for what we were calling the West Side Park. So that is inclusive of design and to develop what is the West Side Park. For everyone's memory, that's over in the Boulder Point subdivision, just off uh, Highland Mesa, back behind Staples there. So just north of I-40 and west of I-17, it would serve two very large uh, residential neighborhoods. All right, now we're going to peel into the recreation side of things. Um, so a little bit about just a reminder on who, what, where, why, what is rec recreation. We have managed four recreation centers, Aquaplex, uh, the Hal Jensen Rec Center for our youth, the J Life of the Activity Center, our, the only sheet of ice up here, and then the Josie Montoya Community and Senior Center for our elders and just community wide. Um, providing that safe haven for health and wellness. Uh, we also produce city events and manage external. We permit over 700 events per year. And then we also have our athletic programming arm, which is youth and adult sports, and then tournaments that occur. Just again, a quick background on that. So recreation, their operating capital per fiscal year is $55,000. So again, sit down with staff. What do we need? What do we want to do with this? For this fiscal year, uh, getting a new, retiring an old piece of fitness equipment that's at both Hal Jensen and Joe C. So they'll get uh, new pieces there. Also um, at Hal Jensen, we need a new gaming table, and the teams decided that it will be. Uh, I believe it was air hockey is what is needed there. That's no longer functioning. And then upstairs for the Aquaplex and our fitness centers, a new fitness floor matting, which will help improve that. So there, they tend to be uh, improvements to our existing amenities or network kind of thing. So that's our operating capital. Then we're going to dive into, although it's got a delay, so I'm talking too fast for our virtual friends. Then we're going to dive into BBB rec funds, both one time and recurring that Rebecca was just referencing. We'll wait for this delay here since it's piping through my phone. We need the elevator music. What is that picture? Oh, what's that oh yeah, oh sure. That picture that I used on the main screen there, that is uh Ponderosa Park, which didn't rank high on our top 10, but it's at least on our top 10, where uh, that became ground zero of museum flooding mitigation efforts, and then just south of it is killed. Rebuilt, had the ribbon cutting, and then over to the right on that image are the detention ponds that are being constructed as part of Killip Elementary. So we used to have a playground structure there that has been demoed, that is gone. Um, so that park no longer has that. They don't really have a functioning ramada. The sport courts are still A-OK. -okay. So there's the two sons basketball courts that was a grant funded project. And then the pickleball courts that were delivered to of them with city funds. Those are still intact, but 50% of this park needs to be rebuilt. There is a stormwater channel that will come through there. Um, so we're trying to coordinate some efforts with our partners on that with stormwater. So we'll yet to be determined on what that'll look like. We can get a dual purpose out of that channel. That might be kind of fun. I'd love a bicycle pump track when it's safe to enter. That could be neat. Um, I say a lazy river. Maybe a lazy river. <laughs> <laughs> a muddy river at times, the dirty birdie. Um, we have one-time funding that Rebecca covered. We do have $700,000 for pickleball courts at Bushmaster Park. So that will be inclusive of both design and development of those. Uh, in speaking with a vendor, we are hopeful to resurface the existing basketball courts that are dual striped as pickleball courts. They're in dire need of that, so that's some of that deferred maintenance that we even talked about last month. And then probably crack seal the tennis courts that are also dual striped as pickleball courts. Uh, ideally, we're hoping to get eight pick new pickleball courts there, and then with the dual strike, that's 16 courts. That's pretty amazing for $700,000 if we can do that lighted as well. 
that would be pretty and um, that's an amazing project to deliver. Also with our one time funding is a hundred that up oh, missing a zero a hundred thousand dollars for Thorpe Park Annex. That's that process we've been going through the three concept designs. We'll continue to see that's a hundred thousand dollars to put towards some type of phasing for what the community determines will be the future design and then what is adopt, adopted by council. $100,000 may not get you very far, but that's something. That's just for the design or planning of it, or is that for actual installation or something? All of the above. Could be for all of the above. There could be still some mitigation efforts that need to occur on site, um, or is it something that you know the division and in with commission to, that we elect to assist with the indigenous and cultural and community center? Things like that, but at least a hundred thousand dollars. I promise, without that zero missing on it. Uh, another item is recurring, as demonstrated on that spreadsheet Rebecca was showing, for deferred maintenance. These are some examples of some deferred maintenance needs uh, that will continue going dialing in. We just ordered actually two brand new scoreboards at Fort Park Softball Complex. Those are since the origination of it in 2008, 2007, half of them don't function any longer. That was about a $15,000 expenditure. Nothing crazy, but we'll deliver something nice to keep using those fields as needed. I put in an image up there of some asphalt. That's, that's our urban trail. <laughs> that's a little rough where we have asphalt. We talked about that last month. There's about 11 miles that do need to be a removal and replace that to the tune of easily 11 million. 200,000 is not going to get us there fast, but could we do a section of it at a time or, or some of those bad areas or do a trial of a, a, a maybe a soft cut and instead of a crack seal and then a replacement like a cold patch? I don't know. Are you looking at concrete in lieu of uh, asphalt? I would love the concrete in lieu of asphalt. As a matter of fact, with our engineering standards, we're no longer going to enable the asphalt for urban trail. It's just not wise in our climate here with our freeze thaw. Uh, the image there with the um, with the Tom Moody loop post that's on our uh, picture cannon with one of our open spaces. We've got some drainage issues that are going to occur, especially with some of the uh, flooding that we're seeing. So what can we do there as far as proper trail uh, enhancements and replacements or, you know, diverting that that drainage elsewhere. And then I threw in an image there, which y'all see every month of just, you know, how often are, is the urban trail system used? Just to throw in some images there, get an idea of what is, what do we mean by that deferred maintenance? Then the last I put on there, and again, it's recurring, and it's at that $600,000 value that Rebecca showed. I put a question mark, because, <laughs> you know, it's ideally we were saying it's to continue working towards some grant funded type projects with matches. Doesn't mean the full 600, depending on what the grants are that are available between land, water, conservation, heritage fund, what have you, but, and that's to be used within our existing entire pro system. Um, and it's recurring. So, you know, or is it a buildup of funds? That's why I did a question mark. Do you save a couple years and all of a sudden you have a million dollars? And you go for a grant with a million dollar match, and then you have two million of money to deliver something could get really interesting on how with between staff, commission, and anyone else that we start to figure out how do we want to program that 600,000. A lot of things to think about to then take an input on that top 10 priority spreadsheet. That's all I had. That's, I told you I could get through it quickly. <laughs> Uh, any questions from our commissioners here or um, in the virtual world on that? Did any of that flooding that happened over there uh, negatively affect what you guys were thinking for that $100,000 planning project for? For the board? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I wasn't sure because I know I know the the dumpling got. Mm -hmm. Had a big fish kill where there any it did. The duck pond still will function, can function as the duck 
on um, the urban trail, the Karen Cooper trail that does dip down there. It's ideal to bring that up. Let's get it out of the flooding area for that. Um, but no, the, the Thorpe Park annex proper is not impacted by floods right now. And I don't foresee that happening. Any other questions? How many miles of uh, sections of the Fox Trail did you approximately uh, need to be reformed? We have 9.5 miles that are not in the best shape. Yeah. So that's out of the 58 and a half. And no funding mechanism to do such, other than if we elect some of these funds. Are there funds in any other department, like with Mark, with Mark Henson, that do like the transportation? Or, um, with multimodal, multimodal has some, but definitely a no with the transportation tax. Yeah, and what what is in there is mostly for new connections. All of the maintenance is in. Pretty much all of the maintenance is in this transfer from BBB rep. So just to confirm or clarify, that 600,000 could go towards any of the projects we've looked at, the, the, those top 10 prior, prioritization projects. Well, for this year, we put that 600,000 in as a grant match so theoretically we would need that to stay as a grant match unless we got recommendation from the commission to allocate it someplace or some other way other than a grant match and if that was the case then we would need to take that i believe maybe back to our budget team because we'd be changing the five-year plan so ideally this is 1.2 with a grant match. Or some combination. Okay. You know, if we only need 200000 for a grant match, or we get, um, or there are multiple grants that okay. we can go for. Um, we also have to be able to deliver. <laughs> so, and certainly grants have a, a timing usually a deadline that we need to deliver a project by and right now we have 80 and a few members of her team for parks and rec delivery and Robert for open space grant delivery so we've got a couple of grants that we have right now that are frankly kind of a struggle to get done with existing staffing but it's a priority because of the deadlines We have to be a little bit careful about going after something we might not be able to. Anyone else have any other questions, comments on your position? Well, we can move on. We don't have council member cells, so we'll skip number five for today. And any questions regarding the reports or monthly highlights of parks and recreation in this case? Like a little bit of those. There was, I think it was an end of summer vandalism. <laughs> yeah, there was some vandalism that occurred. Um, so actually working with, you know, there was an article in the paper regarding some private property vandalism just adjacent to Jim Cullen Park, the tree park, which did spread that same night or incident over to the Thorpe Road Bridge. What was the vandalism? Graffiti, a lot of graffiti uh, and, and hit the park a lot. Uh, so we had so benches and things at that park. 
at the park, yeah, it was the walkways, benches, um, and then a private property block wall, and then the Fort Bridge, um, that where the uh, mosaic tiles are. Yeah. We were able to get that off, which was good. Uh, and then have had discussions with police about when they can uh, improving patrolling in that area. Commissioner Martin, you have something to add? I just had a question. When does these recorded meetings get posted for review? When do the recorded meetings, when are they posted for review? Uh, guys will usually be able to have it up within a day or two. Uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Thank you. That was my only question. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions, comments? No. no. Information items to and from commissioners and staff. Anything? A bit of information that the library entrance is now under construction. So finally got a bit of that the council approved the bid and we are in the Beginning stages of construction on the new library plaza and entrance. Something exciting. Okay. Last on our agenda, number eight, agenda items for September 19, 2022. We have the Thorpe Park Annex. We're going to present the costs uh, for those top 10. Priorities. Is that right, Rebecca? Yeah, we'll try to have you some estimates by then. Anything else? I'm sure I'll think of something. We actually, <laughs> we might, um, on the four park annex, we might actually delay that until October. And we might actually ask you to combine or invite you to combine with the Indigenous Commission. And we'll do kind of a reveal of the final concept, draft final, before it goes to council. So stay tuned. We'll, we're still working through that. I think there was a hand. I have a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Martin. Do we want to delay our top 10 priorities till we further discuss our um, action, the first action of, of, the, of the, our meeting today? Um, I, Brian, it's Rebecca. I think that we could still go ahead and start costing out your top 10. Um, and keeping the other project idea on the radar and see if when we can get uh, more information as requested. Okay. My my concern is we create these top 10 priorities and then we throw them out the window shortly after. And restart this um, process all over again. It doesn't seem like anyone's recommending to throw out the top ten. Okay. We're just we're trying to get some costs together so we can consider what we want to what just how that six hundred thousand dollars is going to go and how we allocate it. Start having that discussion. I just was concerned that we are maybe not considering everything fully and. I wanted to make sure that we are taking the time to do that. I think I think we're, we're considering doing all of them, but until we have an idea of what each one of them costs, then that's determine how much of each one or all can be that that cost. Okay, thank you. Do we want to try to invite back um, Vincent Sean? Uh, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, if they're available in September. 
and we'll, we'll bring them back. Anything else? I might think of something more before then. Okay. Without my computer really operating right now, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we're right at our time limit anyhow, so <laughs> with all the glitches, I'm glad we made it through. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I don't know if no one has anything further, and uh, bring this meeting to adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.